you play, please make sure you share the feed and hit that like button. Oh, by the way, as I'm saying that, guys, uh, do, 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 do. Got some information from YouTube. If you are subscribed, you need to hit the bell because just simply subscribing is n at this point in the game is not what we think of as a subscription. Uh, I don't even know what it really means. I mean, it's so weird that there's two steps for you guys to do, but if you want to be subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit the bell because you don't get notifications unless you hit the bell. So actually subscribing in the way that I think of a subscription, meaning you would get a notification every time I upload a video, <laughs> is not simply subscribing. You need to hit the, uh, the bell, okay? Super weird, uh, but this is YouTube. So please make sure that you guys hit the bell. Uh, I was able to get into my analytics and as, the, as of right now, there's 40, nearly 47,000 of you guys subscribed, but only about 4,000 and some change have actually hit the bell. So really, in these terms, we've only got about 4,500 or 4,700, something like that, uh, subscribed in today's terms. So we're kind of like, I don't know, whatever. Please just hit the bell, doesn't matter. I'm still gonna be popping out content. Um, sometimes I look at this as kind of like, you know, I get a concept. <coughs> I get a concept, let's say I get a concept today, and I hit you guys with the concept today, and that video doesn't really make its rounds until like, uh, let's say two months from now. And then let's say, there's guys that get that video six months from now. Well, six months from now, if I'm teaching a class, let's call this a class or a concepts, whatever, however you wanna look at it. If you're getting it, if you're getting a video from six months ago, I've probably already moved on to a whole new way of thinking that I wanna share with you guys. So it behooves you to not have that bell hit. Make sense? All right, guys, enough of the uh, housekeeping stuff. I'm doing well. I hope everyone out there is doing well. I am in Bangkok right now. I just got back from Vietnam. I got back from Vietnam yesterday. V uh, da Nang, Vietnam was awesome, man. Da Nang, Vietnam was freaking awesome. If you guys are looking for a place just to chill out and relax, this little neighborhood called N. Trung, I believe is how you say it. It's spelled A-N-T-H-O-U-N-G. It might be T-H-U-O-N-G, I'm not sure. But anyway, it's a four block little uh, like expat hub. If you guys know IT Park and Cebu, uh, I don't know, it's kind of reminiscent of that, but it's like, one block from the beach, my hotel, my hotel, I just posted the uh, hotel video, you guys can see the hotel, it's the last upload. 15 bucks to stay one block away from the beach. Unbelievable, nice beach. Uh, people in Vietnam were surprisingly friendly. You know, last time I was there, I was in Hanoi, and I, I felt a certain like toughness, like don't play around with me type thing. Maybe that's Hanoi, maybe that's a bigger city. You know, Da Nang is more um, the beach life. Every time I walk the beach, all of the girls that I talked to were all, college, were all college students. So there's a college there, and what they do in their, when they're not, not studying, they go to the beach and they go hang out. Um, definitely gonna take a little bit more time than Thailand, but who cares? You know, put a little bit of, put a little bit of time in to meet these girls you might get a real benefit. I met a girl, I don't know how much of the footage I'll release of this because it's it's a long conversation and just me talking to this girl's, I don't know if it's really like um, worthy of an upload because it's just us talking. But anyway, this girl was 
um, beautiful. She was out on the beach taking pictures and I would just went up and, and uh, she's a student, she's 23 years old, no kids, not married, and she's going to be a doctor. And I was like, damn, you must have guys lined up. She's like, nope, I'm not really talking to anybody. So a little bit different than Thailand where, you know, in Thailand, these girls have a list of a hundred guys they're talking to in their phone. So maybe in Vietnam, they're only talking to a handful. Better odds for you guys. So I hope everybody's well. Um, I'm in Bangkok today because I'm doing a commercial. I'm shooting a commercial for some golf product. I think it's like some kind of a, um, what do you call that? What do you, what do you call false grass? Gosh, I'm drawing a blank for that word. AstroTurf? AstroTurf, yes. I think it's like an AstroTurf, but what happens is when you hit the, uh, the grass with the golf club, it, the grass breaks. So it kind of, it teaches you how your swing is messed up or how to correct your swing. Um, kind of funny, I, I didn't think that I'd be pushing a golf product, but um, you know, it's up to God, whatever, whatever happens, happens. I'm open to anything at this point, you know, life, just to be able to, just to be in the game and to be considered for anything is a blessing. You know, I think when we, when we grew up in this like old, um, Hollywood idea of like these stars that we grew up on and people like turning things down and being too good. That's like an old mentality. Not to say you do anything, of course, guys. But what I'm, what I'm saying is, um, the point is this, opportunities are few and far in between. And sometimes I think that we think that opportunities are abundant so we miss out on a lot of good opportunities. So any, any opportunity that, you're, that comes your way, really, really examine it and see how it can snowball into something else. For example, today I'm gonna meet a whole production team. I'm gonna conduct myself like a gentleman and meet everybody because who knows where these people are gonna be in five years. They, might, they may wanna use me for something else. Um, we just met a guy who's a Thai, Thai kid over here, young guy, early 20s. He's directed a series on Netflix right now. I forget the name of it, but um, we we're gonna have him shoot the, shoot the music video for me, but it didn't really make sense for the budget wise as of right now. But just having the contact, um, he loves the Pimp and Paradise song. He's like, yo, if we can't do something right now, I'll put Pimp and Paradise in one of my Netflix um, episodes. I'm like, yo, let's do it. All good, all good. So take advantage of opportunities, guys, because we never know, you know, we think they're gonna come around, but sometimes, sometimes these opportunities come around like, every five years, every 10 years, you know, you never know. So what's up boys, what's up, what's up? Whoa, you mash, what's up, Pete, what's up? Lucky, what's up, what's up? Papa Pete, what's up, Moneymaker, what's up? I've been good, I've been good. Yeah guys, if you didn't hear what I said in the beginning, please make sure you hit the bell because um, you're not subscribed. You're not subscribed unless you hit the bell. What's up, Jer Jeria? <laughs> like a walrus basking in the sun? <laughs> Is that a reference to something that sounds like a? <laughs> that sounds like a. That reminds me of that George Costanza. Uh, Seinfeld episode when he's like the beach was the beach was hot that day or what do you say he's talking he's, the sea was furious like an old man sending back soup in a deli <coughs> I stared down at the eye of the great fish it's when he removed the golf ball from the uh, killer whale. 
Seinfeld, man. Seinfeld is one of those shows you like, you first look at it, you think it's stupid. Why are people, why do people get into this? And then you start watching a couple episodes and before you know it, you're hooked. So yeah, guys, Da Nang was, Da Nang was great. Um, I found a Mexican restaurant there. If you guys eat Chipotle in America, it was the same recipe as Chipotle. So definitely a find for out there, hella good. It's still a pizza show. So what's been up guys? What have you guys been up to? You guys been checking out any video, any, uh, the new videos? Chipotle is one of my only things I miss about America and five guys. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny when people ask me if there's anything I miss, I'm like, um, Chipotle five guys is cool, but you can get a burger anywhere. McDonald's is the most underrated burger place. You know, it has a stigma that it's this fast food and this fake food, but McDonald's is my guilty pleasure for sure. I will pig out on some McDonald's at least once a week. <laughs> oh, so by the way, I'm at a Sukumvet Soy 13. This place is called Citrus. If you guys want to look up where I'm at. Cool little place. Um, honestly, I went on booking. I thought I was booking. There's a there's some of these places have the same name. So you got to look really close. And um, I know better than to do that. You know, honestly, I know better than to do that. But um, there's another one on soy eight which is just right across the street but they have a gym so i thought that i was booking that one but um whatever no big deal this is cool this is cool as fuck and i think i'm gonna work on get, getting to bangkok it's gonna take a little bit of time my place in Pattaya is really cheap. So I'm kind of, I mean, it's, it's damn near like a storage unit at this point, you know? So I'm just like debating, like, do I keep that as like a storage unit and a crash pad in Pattaya or do I just move, move everything to Bangkok? Not sure yet. Nothing better than eight cheeseburgers delivered to your room to cure a hangover. Yes, yes. For some reason, when you're hungover, McDonald's is one of the only things you can get down. Prices going up here in Bangkok. They raised my rent by 5K. Damn. Sir William Elliott, where do you live? 5K is a lot. See, I want to pay 5K. <laughs> I'm so Asuk, okay. Well, you gotta move a little bit further away, man. You gotta move just a little bit further away than um, you know, the center. It's hard to hard to negotiate when you're in Asuk. But if you were a little bit further away little bit more wiggle room and also if you were in a neighborhood like in the neighborhood I was in in Satan those rooms go for five anywhere from five to nine anywhere from five thousand to nine thousand baht one of those places I stayed at though I don't know if the landlord was messing with me but there was one month and to be fair it was like the first month of COVID but my electric bill ended up coming to like 15,000 baht, which I think even if you run the air conditioner 24 seven, it still won't come to that. 
maybe I got a fast one pulled on me. But when she did that, I moved out, so. <laughs> maybe that was her way of telling me time to go. So have you guys been catching any of the content lately? Any questions, any comments about what you've been checking out? Anything else you guys want me to, to cover? I just shot up here, I just shot two videos up here today. I shot one about dating apps in Thailand, talking about Thai friendly, Tinder and Bumble. Because you guys need to have them for your trip, for your trips over here. Crucial. Uh, what's the other one I did? Oh, I did part two of the Thailand holiday girlfriend versus freelancers video. That video went crazy, so I did a part two for you guys. How much money you need to go to Thailand from India? How long you staying? Where are you gonna stay? What's your plan? What are you gonna try to do here? All of these things are factors. I think to live here, you can do pretty much what you want for 2000 a month, US. How long is a piece of string? <laughs> <laughs> Infinite, my friend. According to Dr. Machu Kichu. Machu Kichu. Us physicists say that strings are infinite. Pattaya for five days. 2,000, bro. 2,000 US. Ball out. I've spent 9,000 baht a day in Bangkok before. 300 bucks US a day in Bangkok before. Was I being smart? No. <laughs> Salim, who says there's not a girl with me? Can't show everything, guys. I show a lot. Come on. <laughs> Yo, I... I was shooting in Vietnam and we were walking through the mall and I was mic'd up just talking to people and I had the translation device. I was going to do another video for the translation device and I met this girl. She was like a freaking damn. Let's just say she's a dime. Let's just say she's a 10. She was banging. She was very, very nice. And I was talking to her and she saw the guy filming. And now I should have just said like, hey, we're, we're making a video. I really like you. Let me get your information. But I just kept talking. And then she, she saw it. And then she saw me go and talk to somebody else like 10 minutes later. I made a rookie mistake. I should have just moved locations after meeting this girl. But um, <laughs> anyway, she said she messaged me later and she's like, I saw you making a video. I feel disrespected and now I don't want to talk to you anymore. I'm like, no, sweetie. I was just making a YouTube video. Trust me, I really like you. So that being said, the YouTube got in the way of a hookup. Sometimes this stuff, you, you, you would think it helps. It doesn't really help though. It kind of hinders a lot of situations. Especially like in Pattaya. Pattaya, all the girls know me so that they're like, 
they're like, oh, if we're gonna hang out with Jeffrey, he's gonna wanna film everything. So I get a lot of girls uh, not responding me, to me for that reason, which sucks, right? You would think it would be the opposite. But they're like, not, a lot of them, you know, don't wanna be on camera and word gets around. They're in a video, some dude sees it, some dude knows them, sends it to them. They get, whatever. So I have to say this, uh, I love showing you guys the girls. I don't mind doing that, but it can't, it can't be a crutch. It's gonna have to move into other things at a certain point. Bara Barat Mahan. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Salam, what's up, man? Thank you, brother. Nick K, I had a shave. Yes, yes, yes. We're shooting a commercial today, so I went and got the haircut. <clears throat> Good form right there. <clears throat> Good form right there. Look at that. Look at that. And respect it. We're tired for you. <laughs> I'm getting pumped up over here. I have my Starbucks. Guys, Starbucks is like freaking um, steroids or something. One thing I'm not, one thing I will splurge on over here is some Starbucks. Starbucks is not just coffee. It's amazing you come to some of these places, nobody uses the uh, facilities. So what's up guys, we 20 minutes in. I'm gonna leave it up to you guys. Any questions, comments, burning desires, anything you want to share? When are you coming to Thailand? Yes. Hell yeah, Joe. You could teach English anywhere if you've got a bachelor's degree. Silam, you can you can message me on Instagram. Joe, I haven't seen you on here in a while. How you doing? I'll get back to the to doing the lives regularly, guys. I am um, behind in a in a lot of. I just shot so much over the past couple months. It's hard to keep up. And I think I had some stuff going on with my energy, getting back, getting sober, my body was changing, but now I feel strong, now I feel powerful. I got the, got my mojo back. I'm doing good brother, slaving in NYC, fixing to make a move soon. I'm teaching with VIP kids still. Oh, right on, right on. What's the, what's the requirement for VIP kid? Seinfeld, a million dollars, so absolutely about nothing. They said it the best. A 
About nothing? Yeah, but there's always a story though. It's not really about nothing. Must have English and bachelor's degree. Okay, cool. And how much do they pay in an hour? a good option for somebody who's coming over here man if you can um keep that going while you're here it's a great it's a great option because it's not very taxing you know and if you were to get in this get involved in the school system over here It's lower than it used to be, 750 US per 25 minutes. Damn. Silam, what's up? What's up, what's up? What do you mean I'm not replying you? Oh, Silam, if you send me messages on Instagram that say like, hi, I'm not gonna respond to that. I don't know what that means. You have to send a message specifically to the point, asking me what you want to ask me. If it just says hi, I don't respond to messages that just say hi. I don't know what that is. I want to teach with VIP Kid and get a job teaching English on the work visa. Okay, um, well just keep in mind, once you get involved with the school system, you're gonna to have to go, you're gonna to have to stay at the school until about 4.30 every day and you're gonna finish class at like three years or something. So you'll be there from 7 a.m. to 4.30. And then you're gonna have staff meetings, you're gonna have a supervisor, you're gonna have another teacher that doesn't like you because you're a Westerner, blah, blah, blah. So, okay, so Exilio says $15 an hour, Wii U, that's rough. So check this out, it's, it's worse than that because He's, he's saying 750 a half an hour. So how these companies work is, let's say he blocks out a four hour time period, right? Let's say he's teaching from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. That doesn't guarantee he's gonna have eight classes. So maybe he has four classes, uh, two o'clock, three o'clock, four, two o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock, five o'clock, with a half an hour break in between. So, that means he's only made uh, 30 bucks instead of 60. Does that make sense? So if he's got one class at two o'clock and there's no 2.30, you don't get paid from 2.30 to three. You're just sitting there. So he made 750 for that hour. So it's important to uh, get that schedule full. I, I was doing very well when I was when I was doing the online thing, but I made my schedule so I was open all day. So I was teaching from like noon to 10, 8, 10 p.m. It was ridiculous. Because I, I would have breaks, I would have gaps in between. That, do, that doesn't include short notice classes though. Short notice is 9.5 per, okay. So see, see what Joe's saying is, they're giving a higher pay rate for a short no notice class because what they want, what they want him to do is to grab that. Um, yeah, that's cool. But you don't get a short notice class every time. That's the thing. You used to make two to two point five a month with VIP Kid. How much are you making? How much are you making now? And what hours are you sitting in front of the computer? I would imagine if you're making that much, you're sitting in front of the computer all day. Blue face, bull stag, what's up, what's up? Guys, get your questions in. I'm gonna leave in a, just a few minutes here. I gotta get ready. Heading over to the golf course in Bangkok today, Navy golf course. 
should be interesting. Oh, I played golf a few weeks ago with my buddy and I did surprisingly good. Two birdies on a nine hole course and I haven't played golf in over 20 years or something like that. And it was fun. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> and I think the, for the nine holes, it was like less than 500 baht. And then you pay, you, and you have to pay the caddy like two or 300 baht and you give them a tip as well. So, you know, for a uh, fun afternoon at the golf course, you're looking at about a thousand baht. Keep day job in California with rates like that. X, Xin, Ilio, um, yes, but here's the, here's the caveat, bro. He's able to work from the computer, so he's location independent. So what we, would, what we would do is accept a lower pay rate in order to be able to travel the world. Or you can make a lot of money and stay in California, save up your money and go on a two week, two week vacation. The choice is yours. Also not a bad option because you're maybe closer to family, loved ones, if you have responsibilities back home. Nothing wrong with staying put and uh, stacking your paper if that works for you. 5K is good for a few months. What's a few months? Is it a few months, two months, three months? Only making 500 with VIP kid, just teach an hour before I go to work at a bakery. 4K a month working at a bakery in NYC. Damn. You might want you might want to stay at the bakery, dude. Save up then retire early. Hey, that's a good idea too, bro. My buddy works at uh, UPS. I think he's about ready to retire and he's like late late 40s? Is he late 40s? Yeah, late 40s. Um, I think he'll be able to retire by, his, by the time he's 50. And uh, UPS, that UPS pension or, or whatever their deal is, it's a lot of money, man. It's a lot of money. Forty-five days? Hell yeah, man. That's like a grand a week. Yeah, Joe, if you're making that much working at a bakery, you might want to stay at the bakery. I'm sure at the bakery you can work out your nice little daily routine. You might just want to come over, take a month off every year and come over here and just ball out. Might be better. Massages in NYC are way more than a hundred. <laughs> so you want to move? You you want to give up your job, leave New York City, and come to Bangkok to get eight dollar massages? <laughs> <laughs> but you're not about that eight dollar massage life you you about that eight dollar massage life and that extra thousand bot tip life player <laughs> no i don't know i mean i i do get a lot of massages but i get a lot of them for the channel
And I kind of did that as a joke, guys. I discovered Jason Rupp's channel and I saw what he was doing and the views that he was pulling. And I was like, "This is, is this real? So I just tried it. I tried it as a joke, to be honest. It was kind of trolling. And uh, <laughs> I think the first one got like 200, oh, 200,000 plus views or something. It was one of the videos that like blew the channel up. Unbelievable. Bro, you're living the best life. I want to visit Japan. I only speak English and Spanish though. Some advice on dating in Japan. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Japan, you got to take your you got to take your time with the girls. Because they are um, subconscious about their English ability and they will like turn you down just because they're embarrassed about their speaking ability. So you really have to let them know like, no, it's cool, relax, we'll go have fun. Ask them to show you some Japanese food. They will be, they'll be happy to take you to some, su uh, some su sushi spots or any Japanese food they can show you. They will love to do that. But um, you gotta take it slow with them. And even, even when you touch them, like, you can't pounce on them like you can a Thai girl. Like Thai girls are, are, Thai girls are little, they call them tigers for a reason, you know? Now, that being said, once you get the Japanese girl comfortable, hey, she's, she's in there just like anything else. She's re fully ready to go. that feeling when you're trolling and then you get trolled and make coin. <laughs> yeah, man, they're cool. Um, they're super, like the hip hop scene over there is, uh, they're like super into it. They're into, and they're like into like good, like good hip hop. Like they make good beats to play. Like they're into like good R and B, good hip hop, good reggae. Where like the Thai hip hop, it's like goofy shit. Like they're rapping to house tempo beats, and it's not really like, it's not as authentic, you know. Where the Japan, their their taste is like an authentic taste. Does that make sense? It's like, if you can feel a vibe somewhere that people are like, that people have taste, that shit, that shit's good for your soul. Where like over here, it's kind of just some goofy shit. So it's like, yeah, you get the benefits, like you get the benefits of living here, but it's all, everything's goofy though. There's no, there's no real substance to anything. I don't know if that makes sense. You probably have to just feel that for yourself when you visit a place. Thai rapper Millie is pretty awesome. Okay, so look, that's a perfect example. Uh, ex example. Millie is like this beautiful girl, but she's rapping about mango sticky rice. It's like, it's goofy shit. And look up the Japanese rappers. They all got like KRS one type beats, boom bat beats, like real shit. Went and saw her live in NYC with my crush. She performed in Queens. That's dope. Where in Japan, like downtown, would be the scene? So then the neighborhood that I stayed in is called America Mura in uh, Osaka. Stay over there, you'll love it. Millie go hard, okay. Got a pigeon just uh, joining us. All right guys, I gotta go get ready. 
Wish me luck today. Should be a good shoot. I got the shot. They sent me over a call sheet and a shot list. We're doing like 80 shots today. So there's gonna be like 80 setups. Um, seems like a lot to me, but we'll get through it. I'm mentally prepared. Looking good, feeling good. And um, I'm sure there's gonna be some Thai fire drills. So I'll just be patient and bear with it. All part of the game. Smile in any uncomfortable positions and we will be fine. Leave the rest up to God. All right, gentlemen, uh, real quick. Does anybody have a last minute question? Say goodbye for today. Meet up with Cheap Charlie. I'm open. I'm down for whatever, man. That'd be cool. Please do. We only know. Caught on. There's so many to do. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I did an amazing video on Kowloon. See, this is what happens, guys. I do. <laughs> it's very hard sometimes to gauge what to what to uh, put out because sometimes the kind of lowbrow videos get a lot of views. And I did this beautiful video on Kalan and it, I think it's I think it's doing okay, but it's not doing what it should have. So I kind of I do that video and then I go do some other stuff that gets more views and so I go to the one that gets more views and do that again. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. But then I hear from you guys like, okay, for example, the, uh, I did this crazy hike in Krabi, walking through this, uh, this mud and climbing up a cliff, down a cliff, and you go into this, um, lagoon, right? Beautiful video, fucking crazy video. Hard to make. Fun, fun to do it though because I'm glad I documented everything. Didn't get a lot of views, but people have messaged me and they've said like, oh, I'm glad that you showed this trail. Um, you actually influenced us not to do it because it's so difficult. It's like you have to really be in shape to get through this thing. You could freaking die on this trail because it's so slippery and it's so steep. You're walking up this hill. So I'm, I'm gonna continue to make content about everything but it's just hard for me to understand like what to do next sometimes. So yes, what I'm trying to say is I will go to all those islands that are close to Patia. Thank you for reminding me. Thank you for that, thank you for that. You like the tranny videos. Okay, yeah, see, I will, I'll bring some of those back too. That's another thing about doing this is not all these things are my ideas, but they're a projection of what's going on inside your, your guys's heads. There are some more islands, charter boats, stuff like that for many other islands. Mr. LOL, yes, thank you for reminding me that. I will, uh, I will work that out. That'll be fun. How often do you run into blonde hair, blue eyed hotties? I love them all. So right now in Patia, there's a million Russian girls everywhere. When you see them walking around, they will look very serious. And um, I don't know, I don't really talk to them much, but I probably should more because I haven't really had any negative interactions with them. So there's no reason not to. And you guys have seen the girl that I had on the channel previously. She's freaking gorgeous. 
little Russian girl. She was half Russian, half Ukrainian. Danny the Gray, what's up, what's up? How much to watch a movie in the theater nowadays? I have no idea. Every time, I don't really watch movies anymore. I'm just into YouTube. Short form kind of stuff. Interviews, people talking. Fiction, fiction stuff doesn't really excite me anymore. All right, guys, I got to get ready. Uh, um, thank you guys for tuning in. See you guys later. Have a wonderful day. Peace, love. Do me a favor, make sure you leave a couple comments on some videos, go watch a couple videos, and make sure you hit that bell because you're not really subscribed unless you hit the bell. And whatever's going on with YouTube, with the introduction of the shorts and all the changes, my channel's really, I don't know. We're not pulling views like we were. Not your guys' fault at all, but please hit that, uh, hit that bell, get this thing going back, get us back in the algorithm. Thank you for that, guys. And that being said, I'm gonna go get ready. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace, love, GP, over and out. Later, guys.